the best one. It's like, 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 like a duck. It is. And then when it's like silent, he just. He also he really wants to play the second thing. He claps, but like he said, I don't know about you. I want one. He plays it like every single time. I'm like, just don't play that one. <laughs> See, the like, the, 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 the most common Bass clarinet to touch kind of crazy. Okay, uh, we're going to try to get to your assignment here. I'm uh, going to do uh, three examples today and then I'll move on from there. Uh, we are drawing rectangles, is the deal. And we're going to start right in the middle of example number one. I clarified what you meant. I have to ask you about the And I will try to uh, kind of review this for those who were not there. But we have a function, and the function is. Mr. Gunn, real quick, would it be easier if we're not in the hall? No, no, we're not. The best thing is for you to just sit here and apply for you. Trust me. Okay. So Matthew, is this related? Okay. So um, we're gonna uh, move to uh, drawing four rectangles and try to show this piece here. We have the function f of x is equal to x squared. We want to approximate the area uh, under the curve uh, from zero to four. So what that means is if I start at zero and go all the way to four, we want to be able to find the area that I shade in. Let's see what kind of shade color do I have here? That doesn't really work, does it? You guys can't really see that, can you? A little bit. Better? Okay. We'd like to find that area is the idea. That's that's the big question we have in calculus, okay? So we want to find. So we're going to approximate the area, which uh, Rhea won in our contest the other day, did she not? Yes, she did. And so we're going to uh, approximate this area by making four rectangles. All four rectangles are equal in width. If I draw four rectangles, what's going to be the width of each one? One. So we have an equation. We take the... Whoa. We take the width times the sum of the heights. That's our equation. We take width times the sum of the heights. And that's if the width is the same every time. So the width of each one is 1, and then we are going to multiply by each of the heights. So at what spots do we evaluate the heights of our rectangles? One, two, three, and four. Notice that as you look at this, the rectangle will be drawn in this region. We evaluate the height on the right-hand side. So that would be the first rectangle. That would be the second rectangle. The third rectangle. And the fourth rectangle. Will this produce an overestimation of the exact area or an underestimation? Over. Definitely an overestimation. <laughs> So um, what is the first number I plug in to determine the height? I plug in 1. And where do I plug it in? To the function. 1 squared is 1. Then I plug in, and I get 4. Then I plug in 3, and I get 9. And then I plug in 4, and I get 16. So we have 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, which is a grand total of 30. 30 is an approximate area. I notice that the first one we came up with 40, the next one we came up with 30, and the last one I think we came up with 25 and an eighth. Okay. And that's how that goes. The more rectangles we have, the more accurate our estimation is going to be. Agreed? Everybody okay with the picture? So you're going to have three tasks on your assignment. You're going to first find area by drawing uh, rectangles given a function. The second thing you're going to be doing is instead of being given a rule for a function, you're going to be given a table. Okay. So we would like to find the area using two rectangles given this table. 
what is going to be the width of each rectangle if we have two rectangles? What's that? Four. four. Why four? Because the distance here is eight. There's a total of eight for the distance, and we're dividing those into two spots. So everybody agrees it's going to be a distance of four. Mm -hmm. So the width is four. Can you explain how we know that one more time? So um, the length of the interval is six minus negative two, which is positive eight. And then you are going to divide that length of eight into two rectangles, which is a total of four. But it'll be different for the other rectangles. Yeah. Okay. Oh, for yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. So our width is four. So if you notice, as I look here, there's really no space to draw rectangles necessarily. But what if I advance from negative two, if I advance a distance of four, where is that going to take me? Two. To positive two. So this would kind of represent... Um, that the width of that first rectangle and then from two to what six. six that would represent my next distance everybody see that mm -hmm. okay so the width is four and now um, notice how I have the left hand of the interval is negative two the right hand is positive two and for the sake of this assignment we're always evaluating the height on the right hand side what is the height at positive 2? It says that the function height at 2 is positive 7. And then the next one, we evaluate the height at 6, and the height is 6. So we have 4 times 13, which is going to be a grand total of 52. I'd like you to try the four rectangle option on your own. Please try the four rectangle option on your own. Right done? Did everybody get 44? A width of 2? All good? So we're not going to do, uh, do 8, but we are just going to start out by identifying what would the width be? 1. What would be the first spot that you would evaluate the height? Would you evaluate the height at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1? You'd evaluate the height at negative 1, wouldn't you? So negative 1 would be the first, uh, so, so that would be a height of 10. Plus dot, dot, dot. And what would be the last spot you would evaluate the height? And you would get 6. Okay. So um, knowing that will help you out as we kind of advance tomorrow a little bit. Any questions there? Okay. And then uh, uh, let's go to number 3. Uh, using the following, uh, it should be following graph. Use the following graph to determine approximate area bounded beneath the function over the interval 0 to 8 using 2, 4, and 8 rectangles. Okay, 2, 4, and 8. So I'll do uh, 2 with you, and then you can do uh, 4, and then we'll go to our assignment, give you guys some time to work and make sure you understand what you're doing. So again, uh, we're going from where to where. 0 to 8. So we're starting at 0, and we're going over to 8. Okay, So that's kind of the region I'm working with. So like the last one, what's the width of each rectangle? 
four. And so as you divide this up into two rectangles, you can see that you are going to have, um, that would be my first rectangle spot, and this would be my second rectangle spot. So as you look to accomplish the drawing, we are going to draw from the right side to our height and then on over. And then again, we draw right side to our height, and then we draw it on over. So is this going to be an overestimation or an underestimation? Under. Now, this situation ends up being under. Okay, it's an underestimation. So um, you could tell that as the function is decreasing, uh, you have underestimation for a right hand. Uh, if it's increasing, it would be a slightly overestimation. Okay. So if I have two rectangles, what would you estimate to be the height of the first rectangle? Estimate. Nine. About nine. What would you estimate to be the height of the second rectangle? Four. About four. And, and if you chose three, that, that's okay. You know, so this estimation would be four times 13 again, which would be approximately 52. So I would, you know, I would kind of have a, a little bit of a, you know, plus or minus 10 on that, so to speak. You know, if you're, you know, for what years would be, I have a little bit of a tolerance for error. Try the four rectangles on your own. I just, I'm just guesstimating. Oh. I'm just making a point that it, you know, I came up with about 57. What'd you come up with, Addie Her? 58. 58? What'd you come up with, Taylor? 56. 56? Aiden? 58? Alex? 55. 55. 57. 57 as well? So it's okay. <clears throat> We're estimating this situation. What's that? 53. 53? Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, take out your assignment. Okay. So for the first two, notice that you're given a function. The first one is negative x squared plus 4x plus 7. Okay. And then you're given graphs and you're given tables. And you're going to have some time to work on this. But uh, just to kind of help you get started right away, um, negative x squared plus 5x plus 7, is that what it is? 4x. 4x. If you need to go to your calculator to turn it on, you sure can. Okay. Or if you need to go to calculator and figure out what the graph looks like, that's just fine. So I'm going to type in negative x squared, and then what? Plus 4x plus 7. And I'm going to zoom standard, and I see that picture. Now, if you want to see the actual area that you're representing, and you want to get the, the absolute uh, uh, perfect area, 
second calculate what do you press number seven and what is this first one bounded from from what to what negative one enter and then five enter and as you notice here it it doesn't go all the way down to the x-axis you know what i mean like it or it doesn't go all the way to the x-intercept there's a little sliver on that side a little sliver on that side so as you start to draw your shape so the actual answer is exactly 48 it turns out in the scenario you're going to come up with the approximation and so as you draw it um I just a lot of people on this first problem, whatever, throughout the years, they kind of get confused about the drawing. Negative one to positive five. And so, you know, the, the graph goes you know, something like that. And so as I help you get started, how many rectangles for the first one? Two. two. So if there's two rectangles, what's going to be the width of each one? Everybody agree the width is going to be 3? Mm -hmm. So if the width is 3, I go from negative 1 to where? 2, two and then from 2 to 5, agreed? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to draw every single one. I'd like you to draw at least one set of the rectangles. Okay, At least one set for each problem. And then you're going to evaluate at 5. So we have the width is 3 times, how do I figure out the first height? Yeah, you could go ahead and plug 2 in, and then you can plug 5 in. So as we go to our table, you can plug in 2, and you can plug in 5. You get 11, and you get 2 for the heights. So my drawing may not be a very accurate representation, but it turns out the height of this one is 11, and the height of that one is 2. So I have 11 plus 2. And 11 plus 2 is 13, times 3 is 39. And we know that the actual answer is 48. So that could give us a, a little bit of an idea of, you know, how close we are, or how far off. Okay. Everybody see where to go now? Okay. You have the rest of the hour to kind of work on this. I would encourage you to try to get through the first two problems at least, um, see where you're going. And if after the first one you're like, hey, I'd like to move to a table one or a graph one, that's fine. But I'll get this answer key uh, posted um, right now for you. Okay. Can you also post the video? Yes. Thank you. Um, I will say that um, I think the video from Friday was like three minutes. Kind of did an activity ahead of time to kind of introduce it. So you may watch it, may not really help much. Most of what we, you know, kind of, most of, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll still post it, though.